This is FYI, conversations with interesting people about fascinating projects happening in Ohio. And I'm JT Burcham. Welcome to FYI. Today, talking Ohio public policy with Chris Lightfoot from uh, the Center for Christian Virtue. Uh, Chris is also the Church Ambassador Network for the organization. Uh, hey, Chris, how you doing today? Welcome. Nice hey, to have you here, sir. Thank you. Good to be here with you. Now, those who have never heard of CCV, um, how do you describe? CCV helps keep Ohio's um, churches active, is, is always kind of my viewpoint on it, uh, keeps uh, believers connected with public policy. Is that, yeah. is that how you would describe it? Yeah, that, that's a good summary. In, in fact, just to give a little bit more uh, meat on that bone, I guess I would describe it as, so Center for Christian Virtue is Ohio's Family Policy Council. Um, so a lot of people will recognize the name Focus on the Family. Uh, back in the day, Focus on the Family helped each of the states stand up their own family policy council. And uh, CCV has been around now for a little over 41 years. Uh, the, the structure of Center for Christian Virtue is really at the state level. What we do is policy work, uh, and we try to bring biblical truth and biblical principles to bear on the decisions that are being made in the state house. And, uh, and so that's a lot of what our policy team does and, and where we really got our genesis. Uh, and then at community level, what we've built out are three pillars. Uh, the Church Ambassador Network seeks to come alongside and serve and resource the local church in the local community. Our Ohio Christian Education Network is a network of over 175 schools that serve over 50,000 students in local communities in Ohio. And then our Christian Business Partnership is our, our network of Christian business owners around the state that serve Christian businesses in the local community. So those three pillars are our local community outworking of the state-level policy work that our policy team does. Very cool. I understand uh, we had folks here from the station just came back from uh, what they called great events. Uh, one in Cincinnati uh, with Riley Gaines and Chloe Cole, another in Columbus with uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. So were you at either of those? I did not get a chance. They didn't invite me to either one of those events. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll no. make sure you're on the uh, invite list next year, JT. Um, yeah. Okay. I, those were both great events. Um, and what we try to do in our events, uh, even if, you know, in the case of Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, and he even asked this question from stage, why is Center for Christian Virtue bringing a Hindu into <laughs> the event? And uh, what we try to do is have somebody who is, is an intelligent voice on some of the cultural and political issues that are going on in society today, uh, speak to some of those issues. And then our team brings biblical truth to bear. So in, in a lot of ways, uh, Vivek even was almost a, hey, how do we understand the times? Help us help us navigate what's going on. And, and how, do, how do we define some of what we're seeing? And then our team, and Aaron did a wonderful job of this in that event, uh, brought some biblical truth to bear on some of the understanding that Vivek provided. Uh, man, the Riley Gaines Chloe Cole event down in Cincinnati, though, was phenomenal. Uh, those two ladies have been helping us with the HB 68 bill that we had uh, we've been working on for over six years now. Uh, HB 68 is the House Bill 68, uh, and that was the SAFE Act. SAFE stands for Saving Adolescents from Experimentation, the SAFE Act, and then the Save Women's Sports Act. And many people will recognize Riley Gaines' name. She's been advocating for Save Women's Sports around the country. Uh, but Chloe Cole was a, a beautiful and vibrant young woman who helped us have the conversation and provided testimony from a detransitioner's perspective. Um, so she shares her story and actually anybody uh, that would want to can go on to our website and look up the narrative. And we did a live recording of our narrative podcast from the event that evening, and they can hear more of Chloe's story. Uh, but she began socially transitioning in junior high, uh, began uh, chemically and then surgically transitioning in high school, and then detransitioned by the end of high school. And she shares her whole story. And now she uses that story uh, to, to advocate for uh, individuals around the country who have been caught up in this really social contagion of transgender uh, theory and philosophy. 
and uh, and try to help them understand the consequences that they may not have considered um, and, and really push back even against some of the institutions, uh, the children's hospitals, and shed light in a very, very dark space in our culture right now. So, uh, yeah, powerful testimonies from those two ladies in those two events. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the website. I believe that's ccv.org. Is that correct? Yes. That's correct. Yep. ccv.org. Yep. And the narrative is uh, our ccv podcast and they can find that on any of the platforms but they can also find it on ccv.org yep okay now i've got kind of a trick question for you here i was uh you know watching social media the other day someone brought up the argument that you know the uh you know there is a political party that is always anti-gun leave my guns alone leave my kids alone uh don't make me take a shot they're very you know, almost libertarian. And, and then when we come to abortion, we're not necessarily that way. I was intrigued by that point. I'd never heard it quite so succinctly. Um, what do you say to someone who brings that approach and that question uh, concerning abortion, which is our next topic here on the agenda? Yeah, yeah. And we've been hearing that more and more. And it is interesting how the libertarian mindset has flipped a little bit, hasn't it? Especially yeah. with issue one last year, uh, the libertarian mindset used to always be the uh, small government conservatives. Uh, we don't want government in our business. Uh, I, I'll, I'll couch this a little bit in some philosophy. We won't go too deep down that rabbit hole. Uh, but with the advent of, of Marxism and Nietzsche and Freud, you've got a lot of people now saying the authority and the autonomy of the self is the highest expression of truth. And basically, then I get to do what I want to do and you can't tell me not to. And when you have that mentality creeping into society, uh, yeah, you're going to have some people that start to say even government should not be able to tell me what to do. So I'll bring that back to biblical context, though, and say, what is the purpose of government? Well, biblically, Romans 13, 1 Peter, biblically, the purpose of government is to incentivize good and to restrain evil. And when we look at abortion, well, you could even just couch it in a civil rights conversation and say there's a, a one side of this that is arguing for women's rights and we are arguing for human rights. And we are saying, no, 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 at conception, that individual has human rights and we have to protect it and the government should protect it. And so that's that's kind of how we would. Uh, I guess, have that conversation. That's that's very terse. Obviously, this is a brief uh, interview that we're conducting here, and we could certainly yes, go. Yes, yes. That's a big question for a 14-minute yeah, interview. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, that's. I love the question, though, because you're right. Your listeners and the body of Christ in general needs to understand how to respond to some of these things. And, uh, you know, the, the arguments are crafty on the other side. And oh, yeah. uh, we can't be ignorant to those conversations. We have to be uh, equipped and ready to uh, address anybody that has questions concerning these issues. So, Well, and without a doubt, you're speaking up for those with a marginalized voice. Uh, yes. Those who don't have a voice, you're speaking up for. And if there's ever a time that, you know, justice is uh, you know being touted you know, justice for that unborn is certainly uh, uh, worthy worthy argument. So yeah, thank you for all you're doing. Now you, Chris, actually work with the uh, Church Network. You're the Church Ambassador Network. Let's get to your turf here for a moment. Sure. <laughs> How do you work with churches, and what can churches do in Ohio uh, to help the cause? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Um, I love talking about my division, my pillar of the three in the local community. And uh, although we do partner strongly with the other two pillars and with CCV, obviously on a state level as well, uh, you know, specifically with the church, we boil our purpose statement into one sentence. Uh, and we basically say we exist, the Church Ambassador Network exists to serve and resource the church and in particular church leaders, uh, a lot of pastors, a lot of denomination leaders. But we exist to serve and resource church leaders in the state of Ohio to understand the times so that the local church knows how to respond. And that's really born out of a lot of pastors coming to us and saying, uh, hey, help us help our people navigate. And I'm always careful to clarify, we are not the church. We are not pastors, although we do have a pastor on staff with us that, that helps. He's our pastoral liaison. But what we try to do is come alongside the pastor, come alongside the church and help them fulfill their Ephesians 4 mandate to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. 
And we very specifically say in our cultural context, there's so much going on today uh, that the pastors are saying, man, help me help my people navigate. I've got a business owner and, and he's up against some DEI. I don't, I'm not sure how to help him navigate that. But th those are all pieces that we have to have our finger on the pulse on um, because of what's going on in the state and in society and uh, our role um, as the voice, if you will, the watchman on the wall to some extent. Uh, but then also not just in a defensive posture, but in an offensive posture, bringing the truth and the light of Scripture uh, to bear against the darkness and the decay that we're seeing in society. So, yeah. So uh, uh, bring that down to concrete. What can churches do? Uh, they get involved. I'm guessing there's a website. They probably network. They learn more uh, from you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I would say the top of the funnel, the easiest thing to do is go to our website, ccv.org, and go to click on ministries, and you'll find the Church Ambassador Network right there at the top of the ministries tab, and sign up to receive our monthly email newsletter called The Times. And in this e-newsletter, I break down a couple of cultural commentaries, what are a couple of things that pastors and churches need to be aware of that are going on in culture and society, uh, because if they've not yet thought it through, they're going to have the question sooner or later from somebody in their church in their community. Uh, so trying to break down a couple of the cultural commentaries, uh, lay out some items specific for prayer in the state of Ohio. And there's a lot of items that we, we should be praying over as a body. Uh, lay out a few pastoral resources, you know, especially in a presidential election year. We've got a lot of our churches that are saying, how do I navigate politics in the pulpit? And, uh, and, and it's a contentious uh, item right now for a lot of churches. And uh, helping them think biblically, not necessarily about the candidates, and we're not asking anybody to platform candidates or speak to or against candidates, uh, but to think biblically about what is our responsibility as the body of Christ in this nation that we've been entrusted, and how do we steward that well? Um, and then finally, we close out with, a, with a, some events that are going on around the state. Uh, some are ours that we put on. Some are put on by uh, trusted partners around the state or, dis, or denominations around the state and, uh, and give pastors the opportunity to engage in those uh, contexts. Yep. So cool. Uh, we've got a minute or two left. What have I not asked you that you wished I would have asked? Anything uh, else burning on top of mind? You know, you, this has been great. I, I Maybe I'll share something exciting. We talked about the previous events. I'll share about a couple of our events coming up that we're really excited about. There we um, go. In, in large coming off of uh, issue one. Uh, so two things. We put together a resource after issue one that was an exit poll from voters in issue one uh, that we call Vital Signs. And uh, any of your listeners can go to the website and click on resources and find Vital Signs. And this Vital Signs resource does a phenomenal job breaking down not just the voting demographics, but specifically the church's response to issue one. And, you know, the, the most shocking fact in that uh, research that we did for us was over one third of weekly church attenders voted yes on issue one to enshrine abortion all the way up through birth into the Ohio Constitution. Um, and, you know, we can talk about there's a lot of misinformation and confusion out there, and that's true. But we also saw the greatest movement of, of churches uh, leveraging their pulpits to speak on a moral issue that was going to be tied into a political issue that I've ever seen in my lifetime. And the fact that still 34 percent of weekly church attending conservative evangelicals and 38 percent of weekly mass attending Catholics voted yes on this was pretty surprising to us. So that's a resource that's available. The other thing I would say is we've got the summit coming up in October. So October 2nd, we're going to have a concert. October 3rd is going to be the day of the summit. October 4th is our pastor's breakfast that we do every year. And then the March for Life. And at the summit, we've got confirmed Seth Dillon, who's the uh, president and CEO of Babylon B. He's going to be kind of our uh, evening entertainment right before we break for dinner. But we've also got Dr. Larry Arn coming down from Hillsdale and Dr. Ben Carson joining us for our main session that evening. It's going to be a really good day, uh, along with breakouts for specific, whether you're a Christian school leader, a pastor, a uh, Christian business owner, or just general attendee, uh, we're really excited about the lineup and the conversations that we're going to have that day. So I would encourage your listeners to save that date. More information coming soon. We should have registration open here before the end of May. Sounds like a lot of fun. You're a busy man. We've got a lot going on. We've got a lot going on. And, you know, there's a lot going on in society and in culture, and we want the body of Christ to be equipped and uh, and ready to address that from a biblical standpoint. And we're doing everything we can to, to get out and share that. So. 
Well, thank you for your work. Uh, if you've just tuned in, talking with Chris Lightfoot of the Church Ambassador Network with ccv.org. Go there to learn more, ccv.org. Chris, we are out of time. Thank you so much. Loads JT, of fun. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in Ohio. Appreciate it very much.